Okay, so nowadays I'm working as a sustainability consultant in a company called Cognizant. Uh, it's a technical company and I help companies to uh, assess their current sustainability position and then from there we can be able to look at what they need to do to be compliant and then we help them to draft solutions. So uh, our offices are in Amsterdam, so we are in um, Amsterdam Zaud, uh, but mainly we work in clients' offices. Yeah, because we are working on projects, we are looking at their, um, you know, we are interviewing people from there. We are also looking at their data, what they have, and their processes. So most of the times you are on site when you are on, on a project. But also I am still doing my PhD, which is on gender and climate change at the University of Sussex. Okay, yeah, so my PhD is looking at the intersection of gender and climate change adaptation and responses in the pastoralist communities in Kenya. So uh, almost everybody is an engineer there or a data scientist and they are very much into numbers. So there is some weak link, but also there is the diversity and inclusion uh, aspect of the company that they actually want to do. And what I do, uh, I am like the the committee, I'm, I'm a part of the committee, we are three ladies who are leading diversity and inclusion um, topics in the company. So we organize events, we bring in key speakers to talk about women, you know, women in tech. We also bring people to talk about, you know, what, what it is to be, let's say, gay in, in tech, because apparently there's a big difference. Um, also there are what it means uh, to be um, differently abled in tech. So we try and bring all these difference, uh, different uh, people to be try and to be more inclusive. Yeah. So um, we try not to make it to be like a one-off thing that happens, but a continuous thing that we are always doing to make it uh, to bring more awareness because it's a really white men space <laughs> in tech. Yeah. For the from the feminist perspective, it's about looking at gender power relations and how you know men and women experience different things. And I think for me at that moment, before I came to the Netherlands, I was working as a microfinance officer and I was particularly giving women loans. They were called the women group loans. And I actually, you know, I always did things with women and gender, you know. Uh, but I had never thought about it in a research perspective because I think all my life, all the women that I knew, for example, Angare Mathai, they were in the activist capacity. So it's like they studied, they finished, and then they went and became activists, you know. It was like two separate worlds, and then suddenly it's like these worlds were coming together. Okay, what I remember was Trista, and she was holding this map, and she said, um, it was a long story, but what, I, what really stuck to me, uh, stood, stood out to me until t today is, uh, she said uh, she's from the far east, but then she asked, is it, it's far from um, from where or from what? From whose perspective is it far from? And that, that moment stuck with me because I always think for myself, when I say things are not normal or they are far, it's, it's from my perspective. And so when you look at the far east, for example, that it's from a Eurocentric perspective. And that means other places are always looked at from this one place. Yeah. So that moment really stuck to me and I always think about it in my uh, when I'm doing my, my work right now in my PhD. So when I joined the company and I, my first like lecture was to say like climate change is not gender neutral. And everybody looked at me like what are you talking about? Why are you bringing gender into climate change? This is an issue of reducing carbon, you know, <laughs> you know, and so but now they are able to understand, they are also able to understand even as a tech company how they can reproduce gender inequalities. For example, in AI, and you find that um, there's, a, there's a, actually a, a gender and a racial issues that have been reproduced also by these, uh, these uh, tech um, solutions. So we try to change how we design things. So for example, when, you, when they do AI and they do these um, facial recognition, for example, you find that um, uh, um, an example is like a friend of mine from South Africa, her friend's mom passed away and she had an iPhone and so she, 
they, when her mom used the facial recognition and she can still use it and so at first she thought it's because we resemble you know the features are there but also even any black woman can actually open that phone with their face so that means that they maybe if, when you're doing the ai this you you learn the machine the machine learning process where you feed these um, images to represent um, what a black woman could be and then you find it's very limited so and then it just picks up very few features probably coarse hair and the skin tone and you know, instead of the exact features so then you find in tech they, it as we go into the digital world the same issues that we are facing of gender inequalities are still being reproduced there mm. so now we try to make it, make people more aware and uh, especially the tech people and introduce human uh, designs uh, human centric this sort of designs mm. yeah and uh, in the business actually i have found people who are also really um, using feminist perspective in, in what they're doing in their interactions you know and um, it may not appear so from the surface level of a tech company but when you go maybe to these uh, conferences there's some degree of you know uh, people know that gender inequalities are there they talk about them they want better they want to improve the situation most of them don't know what to do but you know at least they know there's a problem yeah so at least i i find that people are more receptive they're more willing to listen to you uh okay uh, my advice my uh to students is that uh this course actually helps you to learn about yourself more about yourself and also about your colleagues and also your peers when you're working and uh, this is the first course that you do it will come in handy in your career because you're able to relate better with people it's going to improve your interrelationship skills because then you're not so close-minded to only think things from your perspective are the right things you know you open up your thinking and when for example you're having a discussion you can see where somebody's coming from you know it makes you more understanding uh, of your team members which i think is really important in any work that you're going to do yeah Yeah. Yeah. Oh, these um these are people are, are learning how to fly. Yeah. <laughs>